let's go for a second to um, security at the school. Um, you previously testified that the school is in loco parentis regarding the students who board there, correct? Yes. And how many students board there? Approximately 300. All right. And is it correct that at nighttime there is no written policy regarding the security at the school? Check to the form of the question. Where, where, what is this relevant? What relevance is that the case, Don? I'll address that as we go. Yes, yeah, so I would just point out that the judge basically ruled that you have two hours. I've permitted now four hours, but I'm not sure how much more I'll permit if you're going to go into clearly irrelevant matter. Go ahead. Could you repeat the question, please? Is there any written policy regarding the nighttime security of the school and who is in charge of security of the school at night? Um, there are clear procedures. I, I'm not sure about written policies. Okay. Is it correct that one security guard is in charge of watching the perimeter of the school and then after the school dorm parents go to bed is also in charge of watching the students at night? Well, yes, and there are dorm parents on the dorm, okay. faculty mm -hmm. members present. And once those dorm parents and faculty members go to bed, it's up to that single security guard to secure both the internal and external parts of the campus. Uh, I, I object to form. We have. Uh, Hold on a second. I object to Is there an allegation in this case that uh, somebody abducted, took her off campus, and forced her to. No, but there is the an allegation that the school's security was woefully deficient and that people were allowed to run around and do whatever they wanted to do. Including. Including all the students, apparently. I object to the form of the question, and I instruct you not to answer the question. It's totally irrelevant. I'll put myself at the mercy of the judge if she considers it otherwise. And, it's a ridiculous question in this case. And I think it is ridiculous that a school that has 300 students only has one faculty, one, stu one security guard to secure yeah. all of the students. And so that I'm clear, if you can convince me one iota that has anything to do with the reasons why was dismissed or the process that led to her dismissal, then I might back up. But short of that, I'm instructing him not to answer these ludicrous questions. Sure. If the security guards were there and there was a regular policy that people should be checked in the hallway, then may not have gone into somebody else's room at night, may not have had okay. That looks like a pretty straightforward <laughs> inference from one to the next. Oh, my God. You all ought to be ashamed of yourself. Don't answer those questions. Move on to something else. Okay. My wife and I are not ashamed. The safety, security, and welfare of our children is relevant, very relevant. Our daughter attended Westtown for four years and was by all measures a good student and member of the community. She had never been in trouble and had many commendations in her record. She loved Westtown and achieved almost all the goals she wished to attain from her education, including admission to the college of her first choice. From co-captain of Westtown's women's tennis team, she went on to play varsity tennis in college, became a scholar athlete, and was honored with the Sportsmanship Award for the prestigious Centennial League. Most schools would be proud of her, not expel her. Our entire family is proud of our daughter attaining this success, but are deeply hurt, as was she, by the fact she did, did this as a graduate of Downingtown High School, a school she never physically attended, because she was dismissed from Westtown just one month before graduation for something she did not do. The goal of our litigation was to seek the truth, knowledge and information on how to make Westtown a stronger and safer learning environment for the current students and hopefully children for the next 209 years. Knowing what we now know, we cannot merely stand aside when we know the welfare and safety of students are potentially at risk given the current practices and policies at Westtown. We offered to settle this matter if, in part, the school agreed to improve the safety and security procedures dealing with students both on campus and off campus. The school declined. The school specifically refused to accept our simple safety and security proposals. Instead, we were offered money in what we perceived was an attempt to make us go away and avoid the publicity confronting the problems. We declined. In our daughter's ninth grade orientation, John Baird told the story of the West Town Zip Line, an analogy of what we were to expect as students and parents from our West Town school experience. Like the Zip Line, our next four years at West Town would be fun, but fast. Graduation would be upon us quickly. 
He then stressed he understood West Town's responsibility for our children. At the end, he said the zip line had a safety harness to hopefully prevent our kids from falling, but to catch them if they did fall. He finished saying, let your kids make their mistakes here, where we will be there to catch them. West Town School was not there to prevent or catch our daughter on her first fall, just weeks from graduation, a major point in anyone's life. We will need to forgive someday, but we will never forget while we believe other students continue to be in a position to fall. We only pray that our actions will prevent such a devastating experience for students and families in the future. When I say a two-strike policy and a one-strike disciplinary policy, do you know generally what I'm talking about? Check to the form, you may answer. I have what I think is an understanding of that. Okay. What do you understand a one-strike disciplinary policy to be? Um, a one-strike disciplinary policy, in, in my mind, would be a policy that says, with regards to, to drugs and alcohol, say, for this, for this example, um, that a student found in violation of a drug or alcohol policy um, must be dismissed from school. First offense, any offense, um, sort of a no questions asked, do not pass, go, just you're dismissed. And what's a two-strike policy? In my mind, a two-strike policy would be one that um, if it's determined to be appropriate by whatever um, body is hearing a case that someone remain in the community after a first strike, um, that they be allowed to do so, but that after a second strike, regardless of circumstances or anything else, no que questions asked, they must be dism dismissed. In my mind, it refers to the, the strike at which it is absolutely required that a student be dismissed. First strike or second strike. Okay. Um, and in this case, do you regard West Town to be a single strike or a, a two strike school? Objection to form, you may answer. Um, at this point, um, I consider West Town to be um, a, a two strike school. Okay. And in your previous testimony, you testified there's not a guarantee of two strikes. And okay. Quote, correct? That's what it says, yes. All right. And based on your prior testimony, based on your understanding today, is it your understanding that West Town School has the discretion to throw a student out over a single violation of the drug and alcohol policy of the school? Yes, the school does have that discretion. If any of the 50% of the students that you've described who probably used drug and alcohol prior to their graduation from West Town were caught, West Town School has the discretion to expel them from West Town School. Depending on the circumstances, yes. 